Good afternoon, everyone. You're welcome to Ask Dr. Sunday Show. My name is Anu Ojo, and I'm greeting you from Kiev, Ukraine. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you're very much welcome to another episode on the Ask Dr. Sunday Show. Well, this is a show where Dr. Sunday tries his best to answer every question that people send to him uh, the best way he can. At this point, I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Sunday Adelaide to you, and uh, we would get started as soon as possible. Good afternoon, Dr. Sunday. How are you, sir? I'm doing excellent. Thank well, you. welcome to another time of uh, active work. Yes, sir. And it's always an opportunity. Thank you. If you're just watching us and you like to watch um, other episodes of Ask, Ask Pastor Sunday Show, I mean, let me say this. A lot of people don't even understand and they don't know the value of this show, like many other shows. Uh, because with Ask Pastor Sunday Show, you get, to, you get the opportunity to get answers to a lot of questions that you might not have even thought of asking, but you are suffering from the ignorance of, that, of, those, of those questions. <laughs> I don't know, if I, don't know if, I, if, I, if I put it quite right. Yeah, what you are trying to say, basically, is that... What you are trying to say, basically, is that what you don't know might be killing you. Yes. Or what is killing you might be exactly those things that you do not know. Exactly. I have put us. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. And by watching as as on Sunday show, that is an opportunity for you to get to know get, those do, get to know those things and to get rid of of um, of the of your ignorance on those important things that that is killing you. So, I mean, for you to watch previous or past episodes, it's very easy. You could just go to Ask Doctor Sunday. But first, go to YouTube, search, you could search for Sunday Adelaja Official on YouTube. And when you get there, just type in on the search icon there, on the search tab, Ask Pastor Sunday, or Ask Pastor Sunday. You're going to see a playlist of a lot of Ask Pastor Sunday shows. And just play it. And I'm telling you, you just get a lot of wisdom from those questions and a lot of knowledge that would help you to make your life better. On earth so uh, that's just a, that's just my suggestion to you you understand and not just with us pastor Sunday show but any show that you, that is on this platform <laughs> people don't know that any show is what what is what watching and is what's I mean you just plan your you can plan your day plan your week okay this week this Monday I'll be watching this show Tuesday I'll be watching us pastor Sunday next uh, on Wednesday I'll be watching uh, pastor without tears on Thursday I'll be watching creative and innovative hour and then on Friday, I'll be watching Building a New Africa. Just plan your life like that. That's what I do, do. So I'm just sharing with you some of the things I, the way I plan my week. So I know at least every day I must be gaining some form of knowledge from this platform because there's so much wealth, so much treasure here that you could use in your life. All right. So we'll be starting with the first question. Dr. Sunday, are you ready? Well, by God's grace. Great. Okay. So let's have the presentation. So the first question is, I know marriage is not an achievement. Achieving purpose is far more critical. However, I am often challenged by the Bible bashers of this world. They say God ordained marriage. By the Bible what? Bashers. Ba bashers. Okay. Yeah, bashers. Yeah. They say God ordained marriage and quote, he that finds a wife finds a good thing. And so on. My observation is that most people marry for righteous sex to elevate the guilt for of righteous sex. Righteous? Yeah. I mean, oh. to have sex, the, right, the legal way, you should uh. be in marriage before you have sex. And all that. Righteous sex. <laughs> I've never heard of it. <laughs> okay. And, to, and in brackets, to elevate the guilt of fornication. I'm not keen on this belief system to marry so that I can have sex without feeling guilty. So my question is, do I have to marry to have sex? Or am I banned from sex if I don't get married? What is your take on this? And what did the Bible say about unmarried people and sex? Oh, yeah. If the question is about sex, uh, it's one thing. If it's about marriage, it's another thing. So I have two questions about sex. Uh, one is called uh, Living Sexually Free. Two books, you mean? Two books. 
I have two books about sex. One is called Living Sexually Free, uh, where it talks in details about this. And the other one is called uh, uh, Understanding and Overcoming Masturbation. Understanding and Overcoming Masturbation. So, uh, yes, according to the Bible, of course it is a sin to have sex without marriage. It is called fornication. Um, it is um, in, indulging yourself without the due covenant and commitment that is uh, that is that's demanded for sex. So sex is the only activity that you engage in or with another person whereby you exchange blood. And you know that blood is a carrier of life. And uh, life is in the blood. So you, just like you and I and uh, Anu are sitting now, and it's changing our blood, that's making us one. And to become one with another person, that has to demand some commitment, some uh, higher level of commitment that is different from just casual commitment. That is why the institute of marriage is needed, because it preserves and legalizes that commitment and that covenant. S secondly, if you begin to have sex without, uh, without uh, marriage, you must know that sex carries along with it emotional implications. So let's say, for the man, no, but for the woman, it does. Uh, for the man, sometimes yes, sometimes no, but mainly we could say no. But for the woman, it carries emotional, most of the time, emotional implications. So if you are dating a lady and you are just sleeping with her without any commitment, she's going to be attached to you. And if you are go just going to say, okay, you can sleep with anybody because it's, it's legal, so you are sleeping with her, with another one, with other one, fourth one, fifth one, you are making so many people to cry and to be traumatized just because you wanted to fulfill your own demand and your own, uh, yeah, your, your own desires. So at the, at, the, at, the, uh, at the expense of your pleasure, there will be devastation. So you will be devastating others just to pleasure yourself. And that is wickedness. That is, that is, that is, uh, that is no, treacherous. So that is why, yes, sex is only legitimate and accepted inside a legal frame. That legal frame in our culture and all over the world is called marriage. Now, the way you come across that marriage is another discussion. But yes, sex is only legitimate in marriage. Now, is therefore marriage only for sex? No, marriage is, should be more than sex. Because marriage is a whole more holistic thing than sex. Sex is only about 5% of marriage. So 95% of other things are happening in marriage that are much more than sex. So um, that's why marriage should t carry a higher responsibility. Um, what about people who are marrying and wedding for sex? They are not smart. They are not wise. You should marry for love. And also not just because you are, you are in love or you fall in love, but also because you are prepared and ready for marriage, knowing the responsibility and willing to show that it. Wow. All right, thank you, Pastor. If I'll just just uh, a, a little follow up on the question because your explanation really focuses on us, and it's as though um, God God really is not even so much in the picture of it because everything you said has to do with the man, the woman, and I mean it also applies with what the Scripture says that you we you um, fornicate sins against his body, right? Uh, but then, uh, what would you say to someone? Let's but that is exactly God that and is God's view. What I said is it's God's view. Yes, yeah. yes. So why do you say it's not? But I'm saying that God? you know, you know, most times 
they use sin like sex to and they, and they see that it is God that is mad against you and, and God is going to maybe punish you and um, so people are doing not because they are thinking of themselves or per se that they are sinning against their body but like they are sinning against God and it would lead to some and yeah, what is it you want to conf uh, you want you say you want to is it confirm you said that yes, you want to yes yes I'm, I'm I'm going to get there okay, okay yeah so now my the follow up question I want to go on it is that now let's say um, the, a lady perhaps because speaking of the emotional part that you talked about ladies so let's say a lady who understands all of these emotional attachment things that comes with sex and and she has been able to to build herself and build herself in such a way that she doesn't she's not she, she she has built a boundary that she wouldn't be emotionally attached to the person that she's going to have sex with yes and uh she understands the the place of confidence and she chooses to just be committed to one person mm -hmm. i mean although they're not they're not in marriage but she just says okay this is, this is the guy i like him i love him although we're not married and i understand that there's exchange of blood i understand there's um, emotional attachment but I'm above all of those things. Yes. What, what would you say to that kind of person? Um, a lady could take that decision, and a lot of people are taking that decision on a daily basis. But then she has to also be aware that she that even though that is her decision, but she could not be able to ever take decision for the man. Because when there is no commitment, even though there are still a lot of people who are in marriage and are still having sex outside, but at least you know that your relationship is defined. So if he is having sex outside, he knows that he's doing something wrong. But in this case, when you don't have any commitment, I mean, any legal or this, the defined boundary and commitment, you, the lady should know that the man will be probably, most likely, will be free, even psychologically, to be having other women as well and other relationships. So if she will also be willing to cope up with that as well, if I don't know, I should be asking you that question. Well, in case you, just, you yeah, want yeah, to yeah, assume. Perhaps that she, she so doesn't have a problem. She doesn't want to want marry. Sorry. Oh, she doesn't mar yeah, want to marry. Yeah, so why is she in a relationship? She just, just for, for sex. For sex or for so, relationship. Or yeah, so let's say she says, I don't care. Let him be having as many women as he wants. That is okay. But she must also know that that is her decision. Mm -hmm. And that decision is carrying also consequences, even though she, she is not against. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, when you wish you also you wish you always know something when the bible instructs something and tells us that's one thing or the other is bad this is not because god is jealous and this is not because god doesn't want you to do something mm -hmm. it's not it doesn't have any pleasure in restricting you mm. it's just trying to keep you from yourself from killing yourself from harming yourself from destroying yourself mm -hmm. So it is our best interest that God has at heart for telling us to, to do something or not to do something. So, but whenever you take a decision that you don't want to do something, then also be aware that there will still be consequences. Mm -hmm. it, because anybody that sins, he chooses to sin. So just like the lady that says, okay, so that means she, she'll be willing to see another girl come to push her away from where she is and say he is mine and then he will not be able to defend her or she will not even have any legal stand and right to defend herself then number two is she should also be willing to discover that there will be three or four or five or ten ladies like that because for a woman i mean for a man man is polygamistic or what they call it is it yeah Polygamistic, polygamistic in nature yeah. so which means man has the ability to sleep with and to have relationship with as many women as possible he doesn't even feel it he has to restrain himself not to do that but uh, for women it is moralistic that it's not natural for a woman to have multiple relationships at the same time so uh, so she should be ready for that. But apart from that, she should also be ready for consequences of diseases and sicknesses. She could say, I'm also ready. But still, there will still be consequences because she will be, you know, suffering. 
and feeling the, the deprivation and the, the assault and the abuse. Even when a man and a woman are married legally, let me tell you this, when you are married and you are married though, legally like this, and your husband is only coming to you for sex, even in that situation, a woman feels it. And she will still not be happy. Even though she's happy, she's not, it's not her nature. No woman is meant to be abused. So, for example, he will not have relationship with her. It's not building relationship with her, not honoring her, not you know, doing what she needed to do, he needs to do, but just coming to sleep. You know, she will feel used and dirty. It's not natural. No, it's not, it's not natural. And it's, um, uh, when God says it's not good and it's bad, she believe me, it. it is wisdom to just believe God. Because uh, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. You might not know have all the explanations, but at the end of the day, you will discover that it is huge wisdom. That's why I would advise everybody to read this book, Living Sexually Free. It will tell you all from every quarter of it why and how to live sexually free. Thank you so much, Pastor. Um, yeah, because you are the one uh, adding and correcting. You have to first of all answer for yourself. Well, definitely it did, it did help because uh, at the end of the day, your, your conclusion is that there are two conclusions I go from your explanation. Number one is that for every action, you must be ready for the consequences. Even if you, you, you are saying you're the one deciding, but just know that you get consequences, so yes. get ready for it. Yes. Either you know the consequence now or you know the details about what will happen to you or not. Just know that there will be consequences for your action. Yes. And then the second one is with the wisdom of God. That if God says that you shouldn't do this, it's not because he's trying to be wicked to you, but he's trying to save you from yourself. And there is and wisdom protect you. that protects yeah. you. So there's wisdom in it. So the best thing is just to follow his wisdom. And maybe over time, in retrospect, or while you're in it, you begin to discover the wisdom in it. So, yep. Those are the two things I, can, I got from that. All right. Let's go to the second question. DSA, I know you to be very vocal with Nigeria's politics, especially how you campaigned for Buhari last election. Sir, why are you silent now? Secondly, I have watched all your interviews with the presidential candidates. Some, all right, some were impressing while others were not. I believe you are aware of the emergence of Atiku Abubakar as the PDP candidate and the endorsement he got from Obasanjo. What do you have to say about all this? Is there really hope for Nigeria? Thanks. Uh, the, the person said, I'm very vocal. So as a result, does, does the person want to tell me that I've not been vocal enough about that? You know, can you try to clarify that for me? Try to find out what he's trying to say. Well, does that mean that I've not been vocal enough? What, he, what he's saying is that, why are you silent now? Maybe perhaps because um, the Buaris... Am I silent? Buari. That's, that's going to be a revelation for me. No, for I, me. I, I don't want to believe you're silent. However, maybe it's silence that he's expecting, or oh. the, the, what he's expecting you to say is that, because putting it very close to Buari and juxtaposing it with you, your campaign for Buari's last election, yeah. and... What and then okay in comparison yeah, yeah in it's comparison like, silent. It's like yeah because you were everywhere for yes. the last election but now yeah. the election is closed mm. and you're not putting so much intensity as you okay. were putting for the last one so maybe that's what he interprets okay then I would rather read the question myself they <laughs> 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 say I know you to be a very vocal to be very vocal with Nigeria's politics especially how you campaign comparison to how you campaign for Buhari last election. Yes. Sir, why are you silent now? Hmm. Okay. Maybe in comparison, you could say I'm silent now, especially when you compare to how I was very active and vocal uh, last time in 2015. In 2015, the destiny, the destiny 
of our nation what has, was as, at stake. Number one. Number two, in 2015, the options we have was either for Jonathan to continue or for somebody else to take, to take over. That time, with the way the country was being run, it was, you know, the country was going to, if Jonathan had won that election, the country would have fallen apart now. There would be no Nigeria. Or if there is Nigeria, it will only be like Venezuela. If you know what is happening in Venezuela or Yemen, that is what would have been happening in Nigeria right now. So one of the greatest decisions of our country is the fact that we campaigned against the re-election of uh, Jonathan. Now, there are some people who don't understand that and who are rather blaming us or blaming people like me who campaigned against uh, Jonathan and saying that we are to blame for what is happening right now. Now, let me tell you something. Those people, if they will know the facts, they should rather be thanking God and praying to God to, for God to bless all that campaigned for Jonathan not to be reelected, if they know what we know. But if they don't know what we know, and they think that, uh, or if they think they know, and they are still saying that Jonathan was going to be better than Buhari, I believe that a, such a person doesn't have conscience, doesn't have the fear of God, and doesn't even have the love of Nigeria. Those people are mainly people who love themselves more than they love the country. They love themselves and their pocket and their gain. What they are gaining from it than what the nation or the destiny of the nation. You know, even people who served under that government themselves knew that no way. I mean, can you imagine a government where by all the uh, budget was going to pay salaries and even was going to, we don't know where it was going, even to pay salaries, they were borrowing to pay salaries. That was back since then. Can you imagine a government whereby it was, you know, one barrel of oil was $140 and the budget now, when the, the uh, for these th past three years, when this uh, Buhari has been here, it's, it's, it's bigger, almost double of the budget when the money was, when the income was three times higher, and the budget now is two times higher than <laughs> where was the money going? Mm. So there is no option in that one. I needed to campaign. And if you look properly, I think, I don't know if I have the list of, somebody was uh, complaining against me and other people and saying, we put Nigeria in this trouble. And the person got a list, uh, I don't have it. The person got a list of Nigerians that were, that was said to have campaigned against against Jonathan. That it is those Nigerians who put uh, who put the country in this kind of problem. And that list, if you look at that list, you will see that they are the most educated and the most progressive Nigerians ever. And for somebody to now say, "Oh, okay, wisdom fail," is just because those people missed it. That's why Nigeria is having the problem that we're having. I'm sure some people are trying to tell me that, no, but see, the where we are right now. I'm going to talk about where we are right now. But I'm going to try, actually, and get the names. Because by the time you see the names of these Nigerians that, that uh, they said, you know, put us in the trouble, you will discover that these Nigerians are not foolish at all. They are probably one of the best Nigerians you, you will ever come across and I am in that list and I'm proud of it and I'm ever going to be proud of the fact that yes I was one of the people that worked hard and hard hard for Jonathan to be removed to be removed from that place Jonathan doesn't have any business being in that place especially after I've met with him myself and I met with him uh, and <laughs> after meeting with him twice I came to the conclusion that that guy is clueless. I mean, is, is that, no, let's just leave Jonathan alone. Now, let me answer your question, because that's the one you want me to answer. I think I got the names now. Okay, let's come and see the names of these Nigerians that they are accusing for imposing. And the, the, thing, the thing the person is saying, look at the language he's using here. They compile the list and say, 
Here are some of the most prominent names that helped send Buhari to Asorok. So they got the names here. Dr. Obi Ezekwesili. Now that Obi Ezekwesili now is against the same government that she helped to put in place, all right? And they are all denying it. And they're saying, no, 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 we didn't do it. We just, uh, we just fought against Jonathan, but we didn't impose Buhari. But I said, I didn't just fight against Jonathan, but I campaigned and I imposed Buhari, and I'm happy I did. But uh, later on, I'll tell you one of the other reasons why. So Fela Durotoye, he himself is running for presidency now, and he's saying that, no, no, I didn't campaign. I didn't campaign. They are all denying it. But I'm not denying it. I campaigned, and I'm insisting that that's one of the very best things that we ever did. Look at the other people. Atiku Abubakai. All these three people are running against Buhari right now. But they all campaign against Jonathan. Why? Because they knew that Jonathan couldn't have continued. Then Omoyele Showare is, is, is here. He's also denying it. No, no, I didn't campaign. I was never against. Because they are all denying it because they want to be elected now. They don't want to have associated with this present government. I said, no, 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 I never campaign. No, 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 no. But this record is there. And I think they should all be proud that they did. Look at the other one that campaigned, Donald Duke. <laughs> no, all these people, eh? they are presidential. All of them are presidential. All, every name I've read so far are presidential aspirants. Yes, yes. And they all campaigned for Jonathan to be removed. Yes. And they campaigned for Buhari to be in this place, yes. brother. So, and I'm not denying that, but the, the reason why all of them are denying is because they now want to be elected themselves. Look at the second, the next person that 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 uh, that campaigned for Buhari to be there, Chief Obasanjo himself. He campaigned for Jonathan to be removed and for Buhari to come. Now somebody will say he has changed his mind. We'll go there later on. Then the next one is Professor Charles Soludo. Tell me who is foolish out of all these names. No, no. I mean, I mean you, you you rather tell. I would rather ask you for the list of people who are greater than this was or who are not. Who are, who are better than this yeah, one. Yeah. So for you to, okay, let's keep on going. Then the next one that campaigned for Buhari to be there is Tunde Bakare. Mm -hmm. Then Sunday Adelaja. <laughs> and if anybody that has <laughs> listened to Sunday Adelaja very well, you know that I'm not as foolish as people think. I am not foolish at all. I, am, I know a lot that people might not be giving me credit for. And I surely know one or two things about Nigeria and how nations should be governed. But then, apart from Sunday Adelaja, we have Father Ejike Mbaka. Mm -hmm. You know, then we have Professor Yemi Oshibajo. He's the, he's the in government. Then we have Tam David West. Then we have Professor Wale Shoinka. Then you have Chris Okote. So these are the names of 14 prominent Nigerians that campaigned for... Uh, for Jonathan to be For out Jonathan to be, to... yes. Now, so, now let's go back to that question. Because I'm sure that I've still not answered the question of that guy. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, I've still not answered. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll keep on reading the question. So, the question now is that, why are you silent now? Okay. Why I'm silent now? I have my reason why I'm silent now. The reason why I'm silent now is because I rate the government of Bukhari to be just 40% of my own expectation, 30 to 40 percent. I didn't give them pass mark. I think they have performed low, lower, below bar of what I would have expected them to, do, to have done. They are worse than what I campaigned for and what I expected. But then I would have liked a better candidate and better people to come and replace them. But the way things are right now, and that's why I was giving platform to different people to come and speak to see who could be good enough. From the people that I interviewed, there are three people that I think might be good enough to replace Bukhari. They are mainly, one, Showare. I think Showare, I used to think that Mo Mogalu was the best candidate. In terms of knowledge, yes, he is the best candidate. But I keep on watching the two of them, and I'm coming to the conclusion that maybe Shogure might be, still be better, even though Shogure doesn't have the knowledge that Mogalu has, but he's more active, and he's more rugged. So I would rather, I think I would rather pick Shogure right now than uh, Mogalu. 
But the, three, the two of them are qualified. They, they would have been very good presidential material. So Mogalu, Showare, and Tokwe Fashua is another one. I think is uh, uh, has, he is the one that has the best idea of all of them all. He has the most revolutionary idea that can turn Nigeria around. But he doesn't have the profile, and it does. I don't think he has the temperament as well. So that's why, if any one of those people would have been any one of these three people would have been the front runner, then I would have been very actively campaigning for one of them. But I know I'm not stupid. I know that they don't stand a chance. But let me now tell you another person that I think I would have campaigned for, which maybe I will still campaign for, but it's still too early to decide. But I don't think he also has a chance. Is Obi Ezekwezile. Obi Ezekwezile is a lady, is a woman, one of the people in that list that I just read, that, uh, yes, would have done better than all the other people that I've mentioned. Obi has the passion of Showare and has the knowledge of Mogalu. And also, it's a woman that I've never, I mean, women have never been given a chance to be president. So Obi has everything. Believe me, Obi has knowledge none less than Mogalu. Believe me, Obi Ezekwezile not just have knowledge, she has integrity that matches all of them. I mean, I think she, her own integrity is even higher than all the other candidates put together. She has the boldness of uh, Showare. She has the ruggedness of Showare. And, yeah, but she has the brain of Mogalu. And then she's a woman, and she has the experience. No, she is the complete package in this. Out of all the candidates that are running right now, the best person right now so far is Obi Ezekwezile. Now, will Obi Ezekwezile be allowed to win? I don't even think she has the money. I don't even think they will give her the money to run, to, to, but, you know, to win. And one of the big disappointments for me is that, apart from me, who know her very well, no, maybe, yeah. But there is somebody that knows her better than I do. And that person is very, I'm very disappointed that that person didn't support her. Because if that person would have supported her, Maybe she will say that she would have had a chance, but that person is playing politics, and um, maybe also that person refused to support her because he also knows that he do she doesn't stand a chance. If not because of that, that would have been the best presidential candidate right now. So the person I'm talking about that knows her and what should have supported her and be there for her mm -hmm. is Obasanjo. Obasanjo was supposed to have supported and mobilized the whole country to support Obi, but. Since that didn't happen, uh, I really see no chance with Obi right now. I don't see that Obi will win. Now, somebody who told me that, okay, if you say Showare is good enough, why wouldn't you just campaign for him and make him win? Number one, because I don't want to fight a battle that I already know that I don't have a chance in. Number two, I have not seen the structure and the system that you know, I like to do everything predictably. That's why I have a book that is called Life is Predictable. You know, people who know me will tell you that before Pastor Sunday declares something, he has calculated it with backup plans. You know, I would have liked to see such a plan from Shogore or from Mogalu or from Obi with backup plans that with their cup is full and running over that they are going to win the election. And I don't, I don't see that such a plan. For example, let me compare what I'm, let me tell you what I'm saying. Let me, tell you, let me just make a comparison. What Showare is doing, as, that's exactly the way I would have done. Because he has revolutionized politics in Nigeria. I mean, that is exactly, he's doing ex everything right. He is doing everything right. So that's why I put him ahead of Mongalu now. But they don't have structure. I, can't, I need a system from him. He, what he's doing right now is a one-man show, even though he's so brilliant in that one-man show. But it doesn't have the structure. But let me show you a, con a contrast and a comparison to what I'm saying. Uh, the way we do things here, the way when we were running to win the election here, I put forward 1,500 organizations. Mm. 1,500 organization structures that were set up to help us win the election of the, we were running for the, we were doing the governor. 
the may the mayor the mayor position of 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 the capital of Ukraine. That is the way we do it. But I see somebody who is very close to that, thinking like that. And, and that is because their experience is very experienced in it. I don't see the list here. But I have a list somewhere. I have a list somewhere uh, where uh, I saw that Ab Atiku has 300 and something, 350 or 365 different structures, organizations that are already set up all over the country. Found, funded, financed, that are going to be just doing the work they are going to be doing every day, morning to night, is campaigning and mobilizing for him. That is the way to win an ele election. But I didn't see that from my, uh, whatever, my, my Osho Ware. Mm. I didn't see that from any of the other guys. They don't have an idea. They don't have the, they don't have the, the know how. They don't know how to do it. They, they are children in politics. They don't know how to win an election. So when they do, when you have not presented to me arguments like that, I cannot. I will not waste my time supporting you. I am not a loser. I believe in predictability of life. Life is predictable, and you must give me the statistics. I must have the scientific methods that you use before I could support you. So because none of them has that, I'm not going to waste my energy to supporting them. If somebody says, "Oh, they will win anyway," they believe in miracles. I, I too, but in that kind of miracle, I don't believe it. So, and, uh, and I'm sure that Buhari has such a structure too, you know, but that is how to win an election. So but, that, but that is why I am not speaking. I don't see a, uh, a top-ranking front-runner that I could speak for. Mm -hmm. And Buhari, I believe that he didn't meet up, he didn't match up with my so you wouldn't expectation. So I cannot campaign for him, but... If the option and the choice is between Buhari and Atiku, I would rather support Buhari, but I will not, though I will not campaign for him, but I would rather support him. Mm. See the difference? Yeah. So why is it that I will not support Buhari, I mean, uh, Atiku? Number one, because Atiku became a millionaire while he was still a custom officer. Tell me in Nigeria, anybody who comes from Nigeria and tell me that custom officers are not corrupt, even if you are not a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> but to you, for you to become a multi millionaire in dollars mm. as a custom officer, and you said you got, is that from your salary? Definitely. Not. Who pays, what government pays that kind of salary? Definitely not. So I don't need to be tell, told anything else. I think myself. So, so for me, I have my conclusion about article. That is number one. Number two, if you are a sitting vice president and the international government are chasing you all over the world, the America is chasing you, they want you, they want you to be repatriated, just like Alain Messier or whatever is there. Alain Messier. Alain Messier or whatever. Yes. The Pereira or Alain Messier. It's the same kind of guy. So that one, I'm not foolish enough for the whole world, America, to be saying you cannot come to the court. They even looked at his case in the Senate, in the Congress. And his business partner in America is a congressman, was put in jail. He's still in jail till today. That's why he cannot go to America. Go, the, something, the case is in Congress. Go to the United States Congress and type article. Abubakar Atiku, you will see official up to today, his case is still there. So, am I foolish to that extent to be now be able to elect that one? So, okay, that's number two. Number three, some people say uh, Obasanjo is corrupt. Okay, if Obasanjo is corrupt, let's assume he's corrupt. But when they were two, they were together, Obasanjo and him. Even the corrupt ambassador was shocked at the level of corruption <laughs> <laughs> of Atiku. And he had to write a book. He, he had to, uh, we wanted to actually impeach the guy mm -hmm. when he was still there because it was an embarrassment. The way he was corrupt is almost another level. Number three, up to today, the reason why, one of the reasons why we don't have electricity, because it was Obasanjo Atiku's government that spent 60 billion. 
even though I don't blame them for that because electricity will cost more than 16 billion. But Atiku has a business that is connected to the refrigerator. It's the one we're importing refrigerator. Yeah, generator. Generator, sorry, just generator, refrigerator. Generator to Nigeria. Yeah. And that business is what is not allowing Nigeria to have electricity today. And you want to put it as president? Me, I know crazy. Oh. I wanted to say you crazy. <laughs> but me, I know crazy to that level. My own craziness no reach that one. <laughs> If he was vice president and we had spent 16 billion on electricity mm -hmm. and there's no and his own business is prospering. Mm -hmm. And you want me to go and uh, you know now put him as president? <laughs> that one I think that it might even be better for Jonathan to return <laughs> than for Atiku to be there. You know, somebody said, I read it, it's a very, very rough, 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 and very, very mm, uncorrect. Uh, analogy, but I'm going to use it because just for the sake of uh, communication here, making a point. I read it. Somebody, in, I'm a Yoruba guy, so somebody said Atiku is Atiku, which means we don't die. <laughs> we are dead. If that because become president is Atiku finish. I think that's exactly what's going to happen. And then the vice president, the, his own vice president candidate, is called Obi. But they said obituary. So <laughs> after <laughs> Atiku, the next thing that follows is obituary. Atiku is means we are dead. Then what will happen after that is balsa. <laughs> it's obituary. You know, it, I don't. I would not like to not use that kind of joke so much. But you know, I saw it and I think I should just refer to it here because it's, that is exactly the destiny that is waiting for Nigeria. Although my opinion of Obi is totally the opposite. I respect him a lot. I believe that he's one of the brightest minds that we have there in the country. But he's, you know, he's conflicting himself. It seems to be telling a lot of lies. But still, at least he has the passion in the right direction. I would rather make Atiku become retired and not be the president. I would rather change the position. Let Obi become the president, to only not Atiku. If Atiku is in the team, <laughs> kaput. kaput. In fact, I would have been campaigning against Atiku vigorously. The issue, he should be thanking his star that I'm not campaigning against him. And the reason why I'm not campaigning against him is just because of Buhari. Did, his only competitor also is not very impressive. Otherwise, I would have been campaigning the way I campaigned against Jonathan the other time. But Jonathan, I've promised not to campaign for your Buhari. But at least Buhari has integrity. So I would rather let him remain. At least Buhari has started taking the economy in the right direction. I, I would rather let him remain. The projects that I think that Buhari is finishing, they are overwhelming. The projects that have been standing for 30 years, the guy is finishing them. I mean, he's moving in the right direction. I would rather let uh, Buhari remain than for him to be removed. Now, look at the... If you have not read the book of Obasanjo, okay, I have it here. I, not, not the book, but the segment where he was talking about Atiku. Let me read to you what he wrote about Atiku in his book. It's... it's so how will Obasanjo expunge? Okay, let's say Obasanjo wrote in his book about Atiku. He said, "What I did not know, which came to glaring uh, later, was that Atiku had parental problem in his background. But that's not, you know, for you don't, you know, you have parental problem. That's not a problem. Anybody can have parental problem or bringing problem. That's what it is." But, uh, you know, but I will not blame him for that. But look at the real reasons why I believe that what Obasanjo wrote in this book was the plain truth. But what he now did to endorse Atiku was politics. And the facts prove that because Americans, everybody, everybody, you know, the facts prove that. So, but even when he endorsed Atiku, he didn't say what he said is wrong. Or he cancelled what he, he, he had written in his book. He just said, I, if you ask me for forgiveness, I forgave him. So now let's read what he wrote, he had written in the book. Because what the passage was actually saying, he was sending a signal to us mm. that in those things and in those areas that concerning me personally, I, I have forgiven him. But what he's trying to, what he's not saying, that he is expecting people who have brain. To read mm -hmm. is that, but when it comes, what is concerning yeah. is moral quality yeah. and weaknesses. I cannot stand for him. Though. And what is concerning the nation mm -hmm. is sin against the nation. He cannot forgive. Mm -hmm. Only the nation has to forgive. Mm -hmm. 
You see? Yeah. So what are the things that the, the evil that he has done against the nation, why I cannot and nobody should ever work for him? And the reason why Obasanjo just uh, did it anyway is because too much pressure from his on uh, on, on, was on him. But that is not even the reason. He's used to pressure. But the reason why he did that is because of the vested interest. He had his own vested interests. He had interests also that are not being satisfied by this present government. And this is the kind of government we need that will not look at your eyes and give you things just because you are powerful. And that because he, he, has, he, had his, he had his own way of you know defrauding Nigeria that he, there has been that has been stopped, and he wants it to continue. Mm -hmm. And we don't know the agreement that uh, Batiku has given him and what Batiku has promised him. Mm -hmm. But he had definitely considered some things yeah. and promised some things, and that is at the expense of the nation. So I would rather have Buhari to be there than Obas I mean than Atiku. Mm -hmm. But let's see what Obasanjo wrote about Atiku concerning his attitude to the nation, not just to him. Mm -hmm. He said, Atiku has propensity for corruption. Propensity to corruption. He just, he's just, what do you call it? He's just, not, not eagerness, he's just inclined. Is it inclined? An inclination. An inclination to corruption. It's just by all his, why would he not have inclination for corruption? That one, I understand it. Because he was a custom officer. Tell me anybody who was in custom officer and became a billionaire, those who will, have no, who will not have the uh, inclination or propensity for corruption. That is explainable to me. I don't even need the explanation for that one. Mm -hmm. Of course, that is understandable because it's facts proving. Yeah. That is number one. Number two, Atiku has the tendency to disloyalty. I cannot prove that. But that... Disloyalty might be something personal. He was disloyal to him. Mm -hmm. So it might be you are forgiving him about that. Mm -hmm. But disloyalty also could be against the nation. The nation. And if you became a millionaire, where you were a custom officer, I see disloyalty against the nation right there, bold. Mm -hmm. And also with the Mikano generator business. The generator business. Is that not disloyalty mm -hmm. against the nation? Mm -hmm. So next one. So Obasanjo can forgive his own, but he cannot forgive against the nation. The next one is his inability to say and stick to the truth at all time. That is, it means that he has moral issue. Mm. He has uh, integrity. integrity issue. He cannot, he's not a lover of truth. Mm. And for me, that is the biggest, biggest problem here. Mm. And that is exactly the picture of what is wrong with the whole Nigeria as a whole. Mm. No love for truth. If Obasanjo, that people accuse of not being, you know, straightforward or not being, I mean, being corrupt, so for me, I used to have a lot of respect for Obasanjo, and I still do. But, and I think he used to be, he was a person of truth. But for that person to now be saying that this person cannot stick to truth hmm. or say truth, he has inability, he's not capable of saying the truth or sticking to the truth at all times. He doesn't have the ability to say the truth mm -hmm. or talk less of sticking to the truth. That's a major flaw. You know, that's not, I don't even want to have anything to do with that kind of person. Hmm. Next one. He has a, a article as a propensity for poor judgment. Hmm. Now, I've not tried that. I don't know that. I don't have facts for that. But this is his boss saying that. So that he has something. poor judgment. He even, I even had a pastor just saying it, that I gave him a lot of work because I wanted him to succeed me. The reason I even put him there as my vice president for him to become president after me. But his poor judgment was alarming and he was always complaining. He just wanted to be vice president and enjoy the position, but not to work hard. Mm. <laughs> and he was even complaining to him as a president that you are giving me too much work. Too much work. Mm. So why are you there? So that is not what I could judge, but that is what he, he wrote about him. And this concerns the nation. Yeah. If this is true, this is, he cannot forgive this. Yeah. Propensity for poor judgment is not something you can forgive. True. Lack of truth is not something that you can forgive. Mm -hmm. These are things that will ruin the nation. I wrote a book, and the book is called Why Nations Fail. Or what is it called? Yeah. The, death the Death of Nations. The Death of Nations. The Death of Nations. Why countries fail? The death of nations. So the death of nations, in my book, these are the things that lead to the death of nations. 
lack of truth, poor judgment, it would bring the death of Nigeria. So I would rather support uh, 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 Buhari in that sense. Mm. Then another thing he's writing is, his belief, articles belief and reliance on marabouts. Marabouts, is that not bandit or yeah. are they not thieves and bandits? In those, they, they fall in under the same category. Yeah. So he is relying on mafia, mm. on bandits to resolve yeah. issue. Yeah. So, for example, you know, he's going to send people after you. Hoodlums. Hoodlums. Mm -hmm. I don't know that if that is true or not. Mm -hmm. But you, there is no way Obasanjo could forgive that. Because he's going to be using it against other people sure. to silence his enemies. His lack of transparency. Mm. And how many people have listened to Abuja talk to, I mean, uh, Atiku cool. talk too much? Mm -hmm. that, that, you can't see the transparency at all. Even though he's more eloquent than uh, Buhari, Buhari, but even Buhari talks more than him. <laughs> then his trust, Atiku has a trust and belief in money to buy his way out of all issues. Hmm. That is, he, he has mammon problem. He's serving mammon, love of money, hmm. and trust in money. Yeah. Corruption, that is what has led Nigeria to where it is right now. Yeah. That money is the solution to everything. Yeah. So those are major flaws that Obasanjo cannot just forgive. These things will hurt, they will hunt the nation, they will hunt and hurt the nation if he is elected. Then he says, uh, Atiku is ready to sacrifice morality for the sake of money. That kind of person, these are qualities that doesn't qualify anybody to become president. Yeah. He is ready to sacrifice morality, ready to sacrifice integrity, ready to sacrifice truth and even national interest for self and selfish interest. Mm. And you will now be saying you forgave him when so you are the one who said he will, he is ready for money to sacrifice national interest. Even though, if, you know, that is that, that settles it. Mm. Somebody said, oh, but you two got born again now. You were bad before and you got born again. Everybody can change. Mm -hmm. Yes, I was bad before. I got born again. The mm -hmm. grace, But the grace of God did that. I didn't do that myself. Mm -hmm. Nobody can change himself by himself. You need the grace of God. But I've, the last I had, I've not heard that Atiku has received Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, and he has also received that grace that can change him the way he changed me. Mm. I've not <laughs> had that. Maybe if there is a news like that, forward the news to me. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to know that he has accepted that grace uh, that made him to change. And mm -hmm. to, to, uh -huh. But by human power, nobody can prevail. Mm. So, these things are damning and too damning for me to now say I will support Atiku. I would rather support Buhari. Let him be. Let him finish his next term. If he doesn't finish, if he doesn't, if he doesn't improve, it will be on. He will, he will, he will, he will, he will have to answer for it with his conscience for the rest of his life. But I see that Abu, I, what I feel is that uh, uh, Buhari is going to do much better in the second decade of his. Uh, yeah. the, uh, yes, of his tenure than the first, and that he will be more confident because during the time of the best we've ever had in the Nigeria after uh, return to civil rule is during the Obasanjo regime. But you go and check it, the first four years of Obasanjo was worse than this. Mm. But the second four years of Obasanjo, it just took off, it took Nigeria to a new height. I think the same thing could happen with this man here. But let's see the question. I don't think I've even answered the question to the end. <laughs> I think you, you already got to the second part of the question. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Read it again. All right. So or you want me to read? Since you, since you said. Okay. You so DSA, I know you to be very vocal with Nigeria's politics, especially how you compared, uh, uh, how you campaigned yeah. for Buhari last election. Sir, why are you silent now? I think I explained that answer, one. You've answered okay, that. Okay, okay. Then the next question is, secondly, I have watched all your interviews with the presidential candidates. I think I also answered that, yes, right? Yeah. Some were impressing, others. while others were not, okay? I believe you are aware of the emergence of Atiku Abubakar as the PDP candidate and the endorsement he got from Obasanjo. What do you have to say about all this? Is there really hope for Nigeria? 
Thanks. If Atiku will come, that we will know for Nigeria it will be Atiku and obituary, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it means we don't die and obituary is waiting for us. But uh, time has gone. Yeah. I can't believe it. <laughs> and I thought somebody was, I heard somebody ask a question. I don't know if you have it or not, mm -hmm. but maybe, maybe you ask it next time. Yeah, maybe next time. That yeah. somebody wrote in my Facebook something, what am I thinking? About Buhari, uh, Buha, that this is not Buhari. Okay, that okay is, yes, yes, yes. Do you have the question? Yeah, it's part of the ones that. Okay, so I answer. want to really answer that question. Oh, I, I am born to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> I am born to answer that question. Oh, I am born to answer that question. But not, maybe not <laughs> today. Because yeah, because I, Bayo wants to cover. Yeah. Like, yeah. But so, I think I'm thorough enough oh, with my answer yeah, to this and one. Yeah, I, I intentionally wanted you to... You didn't stop there, yeah. but I would still need to... You would still have to run it up now. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, tell us what you got. It's very good that you're able to give um, a detailed explanation of um, your... Stance. Yeah, of, of your stance and uh, perceived silence from, from not just this person who is asking this question, but from majority of Nigerians who were aware of your activism, activi activism <laughs> during uh, the 2015 election um, and also is, uh, your stance with Buhari uh, as compared to now because many people uh, were on the op were, uh, had the opinion that why are you not campaigning against Buhari you understand because okay. if you you were for Buhari and now that Buhari did not perform of which you uh, you already said that he didn't perform as you expected so mm -hmm. why are you not saying let them kick him out. Yes. Okay, but okay, if you're not going to even campaign against Buhari, so who are you campaigning for? That's another question people were asking. Okay, mm -hmm. so you've been having presidential candidates come on your... So who is that person that you're going to campaign for? And why are you not campaigning for that person? Which you give, um, I mean, substantial... Uh, explicit. Ex yeah, and explicit uh, details to why you're making your stance. Why you're not going to campaign for Buhari because of his... Um, Poor, mean, performance. Poor, poor performance and what also why you're not going to campaign for any of the presidential aspirants and you give you give your vote of confidence for those people that you you know that they can perform but why you're not going to campaign for them because it's just going to be a futile effort because they don't have the structure they don't have the system to make things work all right and you made that very explicit and also with the Atiku and obasanjo's case i mean you, you were also very detailed with uh, what made Obasanjo uh, 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 endorse endorse uh, endorse uh, article, and that was just politics and vested interest, and also with all of the facts that Obasanjo had written about about and uh, the life of uh, and the life of Atiku to himself, understand? So everything just shows that no, Atiku is definitely not the person to rule the nation, and any, and anyone who has a mind that can think. And can just pay attention to the facts. We know that no, Atiku is not the person to to take that role as the president of the nation. I, I mean, that's that's quite explicit. And talking about the hope for Nigeria, although um, I would have loved it to uh, to communicate that hope, not with the outcome of the election, but your personal hope. But I think you've said that um, many times. Many times. So that might not be. I can know. say I can say a few things about hope for Nigeria. All right. Okay. So is there any hope for Nigeria? Yeah, is there any hope for Nigeria? <laughs> if I'm going to say this, people are going to say I am Magna Manene. What do you call Magna Manene? You, uh, you have uh, what do you call somebody it? that is Me too Megalo much Megalomania. Me Megalomania. Okay. Yeah. I don't want them to think that I'm Megalomania. Yeah, yeah. But I. I'm a man of responsibility. I even wrote a book on that. You are born to make your nation great. How to, ch to change a nation through personal responsibility. So I believe in personal responsibility. I believe that as long as I'm alive, and as long as God will allow me to get back to Nigeria, mm. that there is hope for Nigeria. I'm connecting that hope to myself. And I'm not ashamed of that. Not because I want to be president, or I want to be... Uh, governor or politicians, no, no, no. I just believe in taking responsibility and fixing things. Anything that is wrong, anything that is out of order, I, that is my job. I'm born to make my nation great and to fix things. And by the grace of God, I am going to fix Nigeria. If God will allow me to step there again, we are going to change our country by the grace of God. So if Nigeria will survive it before I arrive, there will be hope. 
I think that is the short one I would do. Beautiful. Well, great. I think at this point, wow, I mean, our time went very, very fast. <laughs> but that's what you get from having someone who has depth and someone who is not shallow-minded and who is, um, uh, he is always about uh, details and very meticulous and making sure that there are no gray areas, all right? So you get everything there. So there's no how you listen to Dr. Sunday as, answer a question that you wouldn't find a loophole in his answer or you would hardly find a loophole in his answer. And that's what you get. I mean, one are two questions. You can only get that from Dr. Sunday. <laughs> Alright, so thank you guys for being with us on this episode of Ask Dr. Sunday. So, that is what we have for you today. Thank you for being with us. Uh, my name is Anu Ojo. Thank you so much for your time. Peace. <laughs>